Hi guys, this is uh, in continuation with the part one for RMA flow for a dropship transaction. In the last part, we talk about the, what is a dropship flow and then how we can implement RMA flow for the dropship. To continue, so in the first part, we will talk about the setup we need and what kind of a workflow available for the RMA and how we can use those for the dropship. The second part I will talk about the few more steps which we required when we do the RMA flow for the dropship. Entry and booking. RMA order can be created in the system via order entry, order copy, or order import. But important thing that we need to be careful about is if end user return the product directly to the supplier, then make sure that the supplier inform you about that that will help you to create RMA and issue credit to the customer in time. Then the next step is approval. As discussed in the previous slide, you might need to add an approval activity process in the RMA process. This activity will hold the RMA flow till we hear from the supplier that they have received the good from the customer. And, and once the supplier inform you, you can progress the workflow from the approval activity. Let me take, go, take a step back. So this is the workflow which I'm talking about. So if you don't want to progress your RMA for the dropship till, uh, till uh, uh, supplier inform you, you can uh, put a wait activity. You can put a wait activity to put a halt on the uh, on the progress of the workflow. So this is this wait for approval activity is no not only like you want to hear from the supplier whether they have received the goods or not. Many a time organization has a business rule where all or some RMA should be approved by the higher authority. So if you have a such a requirement, even then you can put a approval activity. And also if you want to you, if you don't want to progress the RMA flow till you hear from the your vendor whether they have received the product from the end customer or not, then you can put a this wait activity for a, a wait for the approval activity. Third thing is receiving. As I told earlier, RMA flow can have a receiving activity or they they are without receiving activity based on your business need. If end customer return the goods to the supplier directly, then you can select the RMA workflow without receiving activity. Once the RMA is booked, line will be eligible for invoicing. Of course, you need to do run auto invoice. Here I want to see if you look into this workflow. So you enter the uh, uh, and line, you enter the line, book the line, and the moment you book the line, it will go directly for the invoicing. This is what I want to say here. The second type of uh, flow is if end customer return the good to supplier directly, but you want to record transaction. In such a case scenario, use RMA receipt flow and logically receive the item in purchasing logical organization. Once you done, inform the buyer that you have performed a logical receiving in your inventory organization so that the buyer can create and or create and return transaction on Oracle purchasing to decrement the stock and transfer the ownership to supplier. So what I want, want to say is we perform a logical receiving in our inventory transactions. So logically the stock is go up, but the product is still not with us. Product is with the vendor and customer has shipped the product to the vendor. So, but since we do the logical receiving transaction, logically the stock is up. So we will inform the buyer to perform a return transactions so that the, the, it will decrement the stock and the transfer will transfer the ownership to the supplier. Third, third type of conditional receiving is if end customer return the goods to you and you want to pass it to the supplier, then receive the goods in your inventory and also inform your buyer to perform a actual return and not the logical return. I say actual return in purchasing and decrement the stock. 
fourth type of receiving is receiving processes if end customer return the goods to you you want to keep it in your inventory then it is a regular rma in that case just have a receiving activity in your rma flow and receive the goods you need not to inform the buyer to do any return transaction to the vendor and then next step is creating your customer crediting your customers once rma line is received it progress to the fulfillment and invoicing activity once the invoicing activity is completed successfully rm run the auto invoice to create the credit for the customer and then the closing activity as usual so here what i'm saying is if you have a flow without a receiving activity as soon as you book the order it is eligible for the invoice credit memo and if you have a receiving activity so you, as long as you book the order you have to do the logical receiving or actual receiving based on your business need and then then uh, your line will eligible for the credit memo so that's that's all about the rma flow for the dropship transaction in case you have any question please feel free to contact me at uh, email id which you can see on the screen or go to my blog and leave a comments and i will definitely get back to you thank you very much again to inform you this presentation in two parts so please check both the parts thank you bye